I'm going to preface this by saying I'm going to reference something religious, but this is not a theological conversation. This is raw, practical politics. But today is, if you're a Christian, Holy Monday. And Holy Monday is Christians meditate on two events that happen in the final week of the life of Jesus. Uh, the first is Christ going into the temple, overturning the tables, uh, throwing out the money changers. And the other is the withering of the fig tree. For those of you who are not familiar with the story, Christ enters triumphantly on Palm Sunday that was celebrated yesterday in Christian churches uh, as a king. And then within 24 hours, he's in the temple overthrowing tables, chasing out the money lenders, and then uh, causes a fig tree to wither. I want to focus on us as conservatives cleansing our political temples the idols we've made because something big happened and uh, it was the, the absence of the news that probably should be the bigger news than the event that happened. And that is the $1.2 trillion spending package has passed Congress temporary government shutdown with the Senate delayed passing it, but it happened. And what it did is it just continued to grow the government spending. Now, I bring this up in part because I was, uh, and he won't mind me saying this, uh, by text message chastised a little bit by my buddy Chip Roy, great congressman and a dear friend uh, who we hold each other accountable. And he's like, oh, oh, why is everybody giving up? Why are you saying oh, we got a one-two seat majority so we can't do anything? Oh, we should still be coming up with a plan. Uh, and I want to play for you some audio from Chip. This was him with Jake Tapper on CNN over the weekend. Look. I think Speaker Johnson, I've been public about this, made a mistake when he walked away from the bipartisan caps and a CR that could have put pressure on my Democratic colleagues to come to the table. That was a mistake. I don't think this bill mm -hmm. was reflective of what the American people want. It expands government, increases spending, increases debt, doesn't secure the border, doesn't do what we need to do, advances a radical agenda, doesn't make our defense focused on mission instead of social engineering. I think we should have changed those things. Now, let's get busy. But I can promise you, if you put a Ukraine bill on the floor and you haven't secured the border, there's going to be a problem uh, within the within the ranks in, in, on Capitol Hill. So let's focus on doing our job. There are people across the spectrum. And here's another thing. All last year, we had great conversation. Mm -hmm. Brian Fitzpatrick, some of the New York delegation, myself, Mike Mark Garcia in California, moderates, conservatives, figuring out how to advance the ball. And we passed the Limit, Save, Grow. Conservatives voted to increase the debt ceiling. We'd never done that before. We passed the strongest border security bill we've ever passed. Yeah. We hadn't done that in years. Um, we passed appropriations bills. These are all things we can do if we'll just come together and work on it. But we better get our act together over Easter so we can deliver for the American people. So he, he's right. He is right. And i got to call myself out a little bit on this, on just saying, well, we've only got two seats. There's nothing we can do. But it's not just me. It's the entirety of the conservative movement right now seems to lack any sort of focus uh, on having the backs of people like Chip Roy. Now, here's the reality, and it is what we're dealing with. And I'm a realist here. The Wall Street Journal had this over the weekend. If you subscribe to the show notes, uh, you can text DATA to 33777 to do that. There are 72 Republicans and 168 Democrats who have voted for all six spending bills. And there are 55 Republicans who have voted against all six spending bills. There are 92 Republicans who have voted uh, back and forth. There are 45 Democrats who have voted back and forth. 82 voted with the coalition on average each bill. 42 votes um, the coalition has to have to get over a two-thirds vote. The way the House is working, because they don't think they can hold Republicans together, is they're voting uh, with a suspension of the rules, and it requires a two-thirds vote to get things done in the House. And it essentially requires a bipartisan governing coalition. Now, now my, my point here on the other side, I think, to uh, my buddy Chip and others is – we're seeing constantly with this two-vote threshold on the Republican side that one or two Republicans every single time are willing to be the turd in the punch bowl and sabotage anything the Republicans do. 
And this all gets back to Matt Gates, who decided to sabotage this brilliant plan Republican moderates and conservatives came up with to cut real spending, and he decided to throw McCarthy under the bus at the time. Chip was opposed to that at the time, uh, but McCart- M- uh, Gates and a few others decided to upend the whole thing, and, and we haven't been able to win since. And I do think that that was the moment that broke the spirit of House Republicans working together. But this is larger than House Republicans. Today, Christians focus on throwing the moneylenders out of the temple, and conservatives, I do wonder if we should be doing a better job of throwing the grifters out of our movement. And I say that because you have a guy like Chip Roy, who is one of the most principled conservatives in Congress, who is going down to the floor, getting the arrows shot at him, the, 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 all, every, all the heat for standing up and defying his Republican leadership, for pointing out that what we're doing is growing a framework that Nancy Pelosi agreed to with very little change except change that benefits the Democrats. Where the hell's the conservative movement on this? Apparently last week they were all having a party somewhere in in the building while Chip Roy was standing on the floor fighting. At the beginning of this Congress, (coughs) excuse me, at the beginning of this Congress, outside conservative groups, we're willing to get together prior to Congress being sworn in in 2023 and plot a way to block Kevin McCarthy from becoming speaker without extracting serious concessions for conservatives. And it seems like they spent all of their energy on doing that quite effectively, I might add. They may have gotten McCarthy a speaker, but they got great concessions and they hadn't done anything ever since. Where is the leadership from the outside conservative movement saying, guys, I realize we've only got two seats, but there should be consequences. There can be consequences. When you have 72 Republicans who have voted for every single spending resolution, I guarantee you there are Republicans there who can be held accountable. And of the 55 who oppose everything and just say no with conservative groups, there's surely accountability there as well. One of the purposes of the outside conservative movement operations must be accountability for members of Congress. You all have scorecards. Too many of them are now just to affirm leadership or to condemn leadership. And we're leaving guys like Chip on the floor of the House to do all the heavy lifting himself. The government has grown in part because the conservative movement entities did not get in a room together and figure out how can we come up with a plan to go to the Speaker of the House, who right now seems to be listening to the Hawks and the committee chairman and and not to the conservative movement from which he is a part and who can blame him given the dynamics of the House when you don't have a conservative movement coming to him with some intellectual firepower saying, here is a plan To shake this up, yes, it's going to be a fight. Yes, you're going to have to hold on to some members. But we can, on the outside, give you the intellectual framework and the firepower and the cudgel to hold your own members in alignment so that we can gut some real spending. Where is the outside conservative movement? I'll tell you where they are. They've been busy platforming people like Candace Owen, who chants Christ is king, while espousing anti-Semitism, they've been peddling Tucker Carlson's Vladimir Putin propaganda. They've been elevating guys like Charlie Kirk, who runs TPUSA as a grifting operation to raise a bunch of money off old people, claiming they need $100 million to do a ballot operation in just three states. For the record, you could do the whole nation for far less than that. We're platforming a bunch of people because either they're young white guys or they're young black women. And, oh, we need these are the faces of the future of the conservative movement. And they're not particularly accomplished. They're carrying water for one politician in particular. They don't have an ideological core to them. And to the extent they do, they're anti-Semites. And Candace Owens, example. The conservative movement has been distracted by the shiny object. 
And frankly, they've been distracted by Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not going to give you intellectual leading light moments, conservative movement. Donald Trump is about Donald Trump, and you all know it's true, and you may want to vote for him, and that's just fine and dandy, but you're going to have to have parts of the conservative movement come up with the intellectual framework over which he operates, and you can't wait for him to get there because every day brings us closer to the fiscal cliffs. Where is the leadership of the conservative movement willing to partner with the Speaker of the House and the Republicans and say, look, we realize you have a two-seat majority, but here is our idea. We're going to rally our movement. We're going to have our people call members of Congress. We're going to engage on your behalf. We're going to let Republicans know that people in their district support this. We really do want you to fight on this issue. None of that has been there. What good is a conservative movement if they're just waiting for Donald Trump to lead when Donald Trump is going to lead without ideas? He's going to get his ideas from others. And guess where those ideas are going to come from? If the conservative movement doesn't lead, they're going to come from other people who may not offer conservative ideas. Donald Trump grew the government when he was president of the United States. We need to overturn the tables within the conservative movement, I think. We have too many grifters now. We have too many organizations that exist to fundraise off their base without anything to show for it. And what do we have? A $1.2 trillion spending package. And myself and others, I get it's real easy for us to say. We got a two-seat majority. There's not much we can do. But we didn't even preserve the status quo. We grew government yet again. And we left hanging the good guys, some of whom are getting fed up. I understand Congress is a clown show. It is. And it's more of a clown show now when the majority can be held hostage by just one or two people. It is. And I understood that there was a lot of firepower and intellectual activity poured into a spending package that would have amounted to real cuts only to have it sabotaged by Matt Gates. But you know what? You people who wanted that plan, who rolled it back, you're still treating him like a hero instead of making him a pariah, sabotaging what we could have had with real cuts. Instead, we're growing the government and you're patting him on the back because he grandstands and performs for you on camera. I don't know that the conservative movement is serious about conserving anything. And there are a lot of populists who have infiltrated it and said, what does the conservative movement conserve? Well, we've conserved the Second Amendment. We've conserved homeschooling. We've conserved a lot of families. We've conserved a school choice expansion. We've conserved uh, Dobbs getting rid of Roe v. Wade. We've conserved free speech. We've conserved a lot. It doesn't mean we're going to stand pat, dig our heels in, and never advance society. That's not what conservatism is about. But conservatism is certainly about elevating families and being fiscally responsible. And the conservative movement has seemed to be real quiet of late on fiscal responsibility. We're all chasing culture war idols as we run off the fiscal cliff. Is Christians, much of which the conservative movement are, sit around on Holy Monday and meditate over that withered fig tree that bore no fruit when their Lord and Savior, com when its Lord and Savior commanded it. What fruit are we in the conservative movement bearing right now? A $1.2 trillion spending package and the good guys having to do all the heavy lifting on the floor of the house while the conservative movement hangs out and parties and waits for Donald Trump to return to the White House. He can return to a White House and then we can go over the fiscal cliff together and declare the nation bankrupt because conservatives don't seem to be interested in fighting much for anything. Want to be on the